Welcome to Conversations on Social Work Careers. I'm Jennifer Luna, and I'm your Social Work Career Coach for the new Social Worker Magazine. And I'm really excited today because our topic today is on healthcare social work. So our guest is Donna Shaner, and Donna is an LCSW-S and an LCDC. Uh, Donna is a leader in healthcare, and we're really lucky to um, have her insight today on healthcare social work. Um, in her daytime job, she serves as the inaugural associate chair of clinical integration for the Department of Health Social Work at Dell Medical School. Um, and she also serves as the director of integrated behavioral health um, program at UT Austin. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to have Donna uh, visit with us today is because I followed her career for a long time, and Donna is actually um, a trailblazer and really leads um, her team in the first medical school in the country to create a Department of Health Social Work. Uh, Donna supports the social workers, uh, the clinical social workers, dietitians, and PharmD in the Integrated Behavioral Health Program which is what I'd like to kick us off with. Uh, Donna, welcome. Thank you. And I'd, I'd love for you um, to dive into the two different titles and what roles you play within those titles. Yeah, that's a great question. I think, um, you know, this is my first time working in, in an academic medical setting. Um, and one of the things that I found out pretty quickly is that uh, titles make a difference um, in, in these settings. Um, I think our medical school uh, has done a, a great job and very intentional about not creating hierarchy, but we know that in healthcare, it still kind of exists. So um, the, the first role that I came into, it was director of clinical social work. Um, and then eventually they added uh, to integrated behavioral health. Um, and so that's, uh, you know, kind of the direct oversight of um, operations and clinical operations of um, the clinical social workers, uh, our dietitians, and then we have a behavioral health farm D that's in our, in our camp as well. And so that's really just making sure that um, all of the clinicians are integrating well into the various clinics that they're in, um, that they're, you know, seeing the patients they need to be seeing, um, understand clinical workflows and clinical pathways, um, and meet, meeting the needs of the patients. Um, it's a lot of attending meetings with other directors as well. Um, Can so you give us an example of some of the clinics that y'all serve? Yeah, so at UT Health Austin, which is the clinical arm of uh, Dell Medical School, we have several specialty clinics within UT Health Austin. Um, we do have one primary care clinic and we have a social worker there and we have several uh, specialty clinics. So we have women's health, uh, musculoskeletal, um, we have uh, in, within internal medicine department, there's a PASC program, which is uh, post-COVID. We have med specialties, we have multiple cirrhosis and neuroimmunology, uh, CMC, which is a uh, the, um, oh, it just left, left me, Comprehensive Memory Center. Um, so we have several, several clinics um, with, with, that are all specialty clinics. And there's a social worker and a dietitian in just about every clinic. We even have ophthalmology. We don't have a social worker that's uh, uh, directly assigned to ophthalmology, but it is one where when we do interface with that clinic when needed. Um, and so the opportunities for social workers in there are, um, there different are. areas of practice. Yes. You know, when I first started in the director role, I was a little bit intimidated coming on to, um, to this role because I thought how, I don't know anything about, you know, multiple cirrhosis and, uh, you know, these specialty women's health issues and um, orthopedic, you know, orthopedic surgeon diagnoses. So I, I was really a little bit intimidated of meeting the, the social workers, but when I came on, um, the social workers that were already there really, I mean, they've really gotten to know that's that specialty. They've learned more about the, the medical conditions and, and how to interface that with, with health social work. Um, 
so yeah, it's it, there are lots of opportunities, lots of opportunities for growth. There are not you just you don't hear about clinical social work in um, these type of specialty clinics. It's not something you hear often. So um, it's been a, a pleasure to work there. So tell us about um, your role as the associate chair of clinical uh, integration for the Department of Health Social Work, because that sounds more like an academic title. It um, does, yeah. And tell it's, us about um, that. That position is, uh, that title is something I do in addition to uh, Director of Clinical Social Work and IBH. Um, so um, that position is really, so I have the, the oversight of um, thinking more about strategy um, for the department uh, along, of course, in conjunction with the chair of Department of Health Social Work, Dr. Barbara Jones. Um, so we're, we're, we're partnering a lot around strategy, innovation, kind of where we see uh, our department going in, in the long run. Um, it's more partnerships with other um, programs, other departments. It's a lot of relationship building. Um, and then, you know, as we have grown, it, it's not just in our specialty clinics, it also um, is in the, we have a couple programs in pediatrics. So we have, we've expanded that way as well. And we have um, some of our programs through Dell Med that are in Dell Children's Medical Center. And we have some social workers that are there in, in our department. Um, so it's really making sure that we are keeping the brand of uh, health social work in all of the different spaces. And one of the things about our department is that we have definitely grown. As a matter of fact, in the last couple of years, we did the math, we've grown about 437% wow. since we first started. And so, you know, one thing that's really important is to make sure that when we think about health social work at Dell Medical School, you know, um, we want people to know that, that we are committed to, you know, health equity, that we're committed to uh, improving the lives of our patients and communities and families. And we want people to know that when they work with um, our social workers, that they know, oh, yeah, those are the Del Med social workers. Um, and, and we want to continue to work with them. So as we grow, we want to be really intentional about that and what that looks like for our department. It sounds like you've really put the uh, person and environment focus um, and brought it to healthcare. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think for us in social work, that is something that that's just where we start, right? I mean, that's where right. we are. That is that is common language for us. Um, and I think that in healthcare, it isn't. Unfortunately, in healthcare, healthcare is not um, focused on 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 the patient and and not on the person in the environment. So bringing that to healthcare, bringing it here to Dell Med with um, you know, a lot of colleagues and medical providers, physicians, um, all the, the doctors and APPs and other disciplines are all coming in wanting to be patient-centered and they, you know, they can um, definitely get with our, our perspective and framework of person and environment. It's not here, it's not hard to do that here at Del Med um, because our, our, our docs are also wanting to do something different in healthcare. So, um, but it's something that I think our social workers can easily lead in. What would you What would you say is um, the greatest social work skill or knowledge area that you've used in engaging uh, physicians or psycho psychiatrists, uh, people from other disciplines? Oh, that's a good question. What's the greatest skill? And engaging physicians? Because I think I, you know, I always hear from, from um, like, say, students who do uh, internships in, in healthcare, um, they kind of go in with a sense of intimidation. Yeah. And I know that that's something that your department has um, really uh, worked on, and you do, you do it well. Um, yeah. What skills would you say that, that you, you have in place for that? Yeah, I think I think the big one is what comes to, up for me is, you know, I think that we're really good at assessing the needs, right? And so we can um, we can work with patients and, and their families and communities to assess the needs really well. Um, the physicians have the same goals. It just might sound different. And so they they want to fix the situation or they want to cure, right? Yeah. Want to fix a problem. 
Um, so I think what we're really good at in that healthcare setting is assessing with the patient in partnership with the patient on what it is that they want and what they want to get out of healthcare. And then talking with the medical provider um, and kind of bridging that. Some, sometimes it's that communication of saying, you know, the patient um, is not interested, for example, in starting insulin or, um, uh, but the patient is interested in feeling better um, and wants to go out and, um, you know, spend more time with family and be more physically active. So um, I think part of that is, you know, how we um, look at the patient see where the common goals are between the patient and the, and the medical providers um, and, and helping them kind of bridge that. Yeah, it sounds like it's all about the way you present the information to both mm-hmm. sides. Right, right. I, yeah, and I, I think sometimes it's, you know, we're using motiv- motivational interviewing, we're, wow. um, we're negotiating, we're doing some really active listening to making sure we're, we're, we're meeting the patient where they are. And then, um, so, you know, a lot of times I think in, in health social work, uh, we talk with patients and we realize, oh, you know, I, I don't know that they really understood all of the information from, from the doctor, right? And so it's us having a conversation with the physician or um, with the PA or nurse practitioner and saying, you know, I think they were a little bit confused about this or they didn't truly understand, you know, how this disease is affecting them. So um, can we talk about some more psychoeducation or can we help them understand what the long-term consequences of this medication are or what would happen in their life if they don't go through this treatment? Um, Cause that might be, that might be a better way to help move uh, the needle towards right. what everyone has the same you know, goal on. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the patient. Absolutely. Uh, when you first started your career in social work, did you um, aspire to be in healthcare social work or how did you get there? Yeah, no, I, um, I always saw myself when I first started social work, I saw myself like, uh, always working with community organizations, grassroots organizations, um, working with young people is where I, I saw myself, um, doing that. And then I, um, went off to the Peace Corps, like kind of mid-career wow. and, um, yeah, and I uh, I got assigned to uh, Costa Rica, and uh, I I spent two years and some change um, doing some really good work there. And when I came back, I I, I got a job at um, a small uh, nonprofit organization that had a primary care clinic. And um, while I had done traditional mental health services for nonprofits, you know, before when I came back from Peace Corps. Um, I ended up in a, in a place that had a primary care clinic. And so it was an integrated behavioral health kind of pilot program. I was the second social worker to come on. Um, and I, it was very new to me and I didn't think that that was something that I would be interested in, but I needed a job and, uh, they were paying a lot more in healthcare than, than other types of positions. And so I went for it and, you know, I fell in love with it. It's something now that I, 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 think back and say, wow, how was I doing mental health services without thinking about health? Mental health is health, is physical wow. health, physical health is mental health. Um, <clears throat> they're all the same, right? It's it, it, one affects the other and we can't do true healthcare without looking at the whole person. So um, I am a big fan of health social work. I believe in it wholly, um, but it's not something I thought about when I, when I first started school. What would you say um, are some of the greatest challenges? In working in health social work? Yes. Um, you know, healthcare in the United States, you know, depending on what state you're in or what, um, you know, where you are or what, if someone has health insurance or not, it doesn't align all the time with social work. It just doesn't right. sometimes, right? And so, right. Um, and with, with what our clients need. So. Right. Um, I think the biggest challenge is, is, is processing that and navigating that, you know, navigating that for our clients and for their families, but also personally as a social worker that's practicing in a space where we're seeing how um, access to healthcare for many, many, many people is an issue where um, it's difficult for people to get the care that they need. And when they do get the care, they do have access. Um, it's, it's just, there are a lot of disparities. Um, and so I think, I think that part is, is, is probably the most challenging is that, 
um, as social workers, we want to promote um, you know, health equity, we want to make sure that people are getting access, that the outcomes are, you know, we see it, we can see that the differences. Um, and so, yeah, I would say that navigating that for clients and, and, you know, patients and families, but then also as a clinician, being out there as a practicing social worker, um, it doesn't always align. Those policies don't always align with, with, yeah. the, with the reality. And so uh, sitting with that and kind of knowing what to do next or sometimes just having to sit with it, you know, right, um, right. is, is difficult. I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges. Yeah, that's, um, I think that's always a challenge for any of us going into kind of a non-traditional career path, even though health social work is not really non-traditional anymore, but, um, based, you know, on my years of experience, you know, seeing social workers go into, criminal justice or education or other areas that, you know, are a discipline within themselves, it, there's always challenges like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, tell me about, um, if somebody wanted to pursue this path, what uh, organizations do you uh, network with or what, how would you suggest that they become more involved? So when to be, become a health social worker? I yes. think, um, well, I can tell you there's a huge need for health social work, like for social workers in hospitals. Um, that's a huge need. I think it's really easy to do that. So being able to, to you know, volunteer um, in hospitals, um, if you are in, in social work school, try to get your placements, your internships um, in medical settings. Um, Have you seen that need increase um, since the pandemic? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's been a, um, there's a huge need for, for social work. Um, and I, you know, it's one of the things I also love uh, that's happening. It, it's stressful in terms of recruitment and trying to get, you know, uh, the, the positions filled, but it's great that um, we're seeing what we're seeing over the last couple of years that there've been so many people um, in hospitals and, and, and healthcare settings. Leading. Yeah. Um, and I think it's great that, you know, People are saying, I got to, you know, I need to get paid more. I need more flexibility in my work. Um, and so I, I think that that's what we're, we're seeing that. I think, um, I think healthcare, healthcare organizations need to give that. And I think hospitals should be paying more. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that they, I think healthcare settings can and should do that. Um, and flexibility is key. So um it's, 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 I like to see that those trends happen. It's kind of exciting. It's sometimes it's a little stressful, but um, I do see a, a greater need for it. And so um, as much as we can, we're advocating, you know, for that, for, for higher salaries, for more flexibility, um, professional development. Those are all ways that we try to kind of engage our, our social workers here in our department. But there's, um, it, there's such a need that I think, you know, working in hospitals is a good way to start. Um, whether you're volunteering, um, and then definitely when you're in social work school, you know, try to get those those internships. Um, and if there's a if you're somewhere that has a kind of a certificate um, in healthcare, or you can take extra courses around healthcare, definitely do that. Um, what about in terms of like professional organizations, um, like that um, leadership? Yeah. In yeah, for professional organizations, um, and I might not have heard your question, sorry, if I didn't answer that one at the beginning. Oh, no, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, professional organizations. So, you know, I'm a member of uh, the Society of Social Work Leadership and Healthcare. I think that's a great organization. That's right. I always forget the society part on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a national organization um, of, of healthcare social workers, but leaders in healthcare social work. So that's a great um, opportunity. They have lots of um, opportunities for, for professional development, for growth, for leadership, you know, growth. Um, I'm also a member of an organization called CFHA. I think it's Collaborative, okay. Collaborative Family Healthcare Alliance. Um, that's also a great organization if you're interested in interdisciplinary um, healthcare settings. Um, so you get to, to meet with all types of, of settings and integrated behavioral health settings. So uh, physicians, social workers, um, professional counselors, psychologists, psychiatrists. We'll definitely 
put those links in the at the end of the um, video so that uh, folks can look them up. Yes. Um, and you just got recognized at. Can you tell us about your award? I did. So, yeah, last year I, I um, was awarded uh, it was Healthcare Leader of the Year uh, for uh, the Society of Social Work, Healthcare and Leadership. Um, um, I think it was in October of this past year, October 2021. Um, such an honor um, to be to be named that. Um, and you know, I, I really enjoyed being part of the you know the conference. I really you know su just suggest that people be a part of it and um, um, really get to meet other other social workers in healthcare. You know, I really do believe that uh, that social workers that are in healthcare are leaders. We're not just social work leaders; we're healthcare leaders, um, and we are we are an agent to change, and we can help transform healthcare for the better. And and that's kind of what I see uh, social work doing. You, if you're if and you can ask our doctors, you can ask our our APPs, you can ask folks here at the medical school. If you ask a doctor around here, they'll say, "I don't like to practice medicine anymore without a social worker on the team." Wow. Well. Um, and you know that's the kind of feedback we get from them often, um, and that's right. You know, a whole person when when you bring someone to a healthcare setting, and you go in as a patient, you want to be seen for who you are, not just that disease, not just that condition. Um, and I think that we help uh, physicians be better physicians. I think that physicians help us be better social workers. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I I really I really do think that we are. Um, and, and I think that the, you know, through those organizations and through that work, that's, you know, that's kind of the trailblazing that we're talking about, right? Yes. And seeing um, ourselves um, as transformers of healthcare. Yes, yeah. I think that's one of the things um, that I've admired so much about watching your career is that, um, you know, going in, it seemed like it, well, it's a big charge, the work that you're doing but you are able to kind of make it your own and, you know, create a niche for yourself in that now you're a trailblazer. Mm -hmm. And I, I love, that's so inspirational for, you know, new social workers when they're thinking about choosing careers where there may not be a lot of other social workers, or they have the opportunity to develop something. It may seem like a big, you know, responsibility at first, but if you can really make it your own, you know, it, it, it becomes a national model because there's so many opportunities out there. Definitely. I mean, I think there's so many different ways in which you can see health social work in healthcare settings. You know, we have social workers that are in the hospital, um, on the floor, you know, day to day with patients. Um, we have uh, social workers that are serving as behavioral health specialists and doing outpatient mental health services, you know, providing psychotherapy. We have social workers that are doing case management. And then, you know, in my role, I'm sitting in, in meetings where I'm helping with, you know, policy changes. Um, you know, we talk about culture change and change management. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm part of those meetings where we're having those types of discussions. Um, we have social workers in research, you know, social workers in uh, program coordination. Um, um, those are all different ways where we see social work in healthcare. Um, Quality improvement is another one where I see social work, you know, health social work being um, a potential role. Um, so it's at the, the micro, macro, and meso <laughs> levels. Uh, one of the questions that I get from our undergraduate students is, is there room for uh, BSWs in healthcare? I think that there are. Um, you know, I think skills that are really needed in a healthcare setting is that you, you, you really, um, one, you need to know kind of the healthcare system and know how it goes, and you got to be okay with, um, you know, speaking up. So um, I think that if you can find, you know, BSWs that are okay with really, and a big part of that is understanding what your role is and understanding what other people's roles are on, a, on an interdisciplinary healthcare team, um, regardless if you're a BSW or a master's level. I think... Um, there's a lot of, of room for BSWs to do community engagement. Um, there's a lot of room for BSWs to engage with, with patients as well. Um, yeah. Resource finding, but that, that piece of, you know, coming back and relaying that information to the medical team, um, it takes some, some getting used to, and it takes some, you know, there you gotta be quick, you gotta be succinct. 
Um, and so I think regardless of what someone's um, degree is, it's those are some of the skills that you that you would need. And I, I happen to see that more in, in the master's level than I do yeah. you know, in the BSWs. But if, if there are BSWs out there that can do that and feel comfortable doing that, then go for it. It's really reflective of life though. Like, you know, when you go to see the doctor, you do have to be quick and succinct. There's very few doctors that will take, you know, a long time to explain something to you. So, you know, I think that we all kind of have those skills naturally, just thinking about, you know, our own healthcare appointments and the way that we need to approach medical staff. Definitely. I think that's something that, you know, one day I hope we could change, right? Where yeah. we don't have to go in like that when we think about healthcare. I wish, I wish it was the other way around and social, you know, it's more like, I want to hear your whole story. Right. And then we'll talk about what we're going to do with your health. But the reality is right now, right. It's, you know, you do, you got to go in there fast. If you don't go in with them, you know, I would always tell patients that um, I would always suggest to them to just have their questions of what they wanted to ask them on the mm -hmm. phone. And go in there with their phone with the, the, the questions already there and say, I have questions I want to ask you before, before you leave. Otherwise, yeah, um, the doctor may leave and you are left with, you know, unanswered questions. <laughs> That's great. Um, so I have one more question for you. Uh, what advice would you give for either new graduates or people, maybe who, social workers who have experience who would like to move into this field? I would say continue to keep that your center of like your social work values when you go into healthcare. Um, our, you know, our values of looking at the patient um, or the person in environment, looking at the whole, yeah, looking at the whole person, the social justice lens is really important and as well in healthcare, health equity, keep all of those, those values and, and that framework and those lenses there, no matter what, even if you're the only one, you know, even yeah. if you're the only one saying it, um, don't be afraid to speak up and speak out, just, you know, do it and do it with confidence. You don't have to, you know, yell and scream, but do it with confidence um, you as a social worker, you have a skill set and a knowledge base that is needed in healthcare. Remember that when you're the only social worker sitting in a room with a, a bunch of different medical providers, um, they would love to hear your, your insight. And once they see how it'll benefit the patient and how it'll benefit them, you know, they won't let you go. So um, keep your voice. That's great advice for um any social worker going into a non-traditional field is just to stay centered and remember what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. And that social uh, justice lens and, um, and equity is so unique to our profession. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like a, an extra class or, you know, that's the, the, the core of what we do. So um, mm -hmm. that I love that advice. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Well, thank you so much uh, for spending this time with us. And um, for our viewers, uh, we'll have a couple of links at the end um, to look up the organizations that Donna recommended. And if you have any questions, um, just drop them in the, um, in the comments of the YouTube uh, channel and we'll be happy to add, answer them. Thank you so much, Donna. Thank you, Jennifer.